the sound of, of the carillon uh, and also um, the experience of climbing a tower and making music that spreads over a large area. Um, it's just uh, magical. The caroliner can never own his own instrument. There are a few caroliners that have bought small traveling carillons, which are mounted on the back of trucks, but this is really the exception. So you can play the carillon using your hands, and you make a fist, and can strike the individual keys, and uh, by alternating your fists, you can play quite fast passages. like that, and that really gives the carillon its musical quality and uh, makes the playing of a, a caroliner different from the automatic because when the automatic goes, the sound is always the same, but a uh, caroliner can play with musical expression so that every caroliner can develop his own style of playing. We have four carillons in Berlin and two of them are administered by people who say, oh, well, we don't need a caroliner to play it. Uh, it plays automatically by itself, and that's enough for us. There are always people that don't like listening to bells, and unfortunately, after the Carolyn Tower was built, they built, um, an apartment house about 600 meters away from the tower, and there are a couple of people there who don't like the carillon and complain about it. I drew up nine pages of specifications, and also I determined the weights of the clappers, how heavy they were, and the material they were made of, the uh, type of paint used to paint the bell frame, uh, the quality of stainless steel uh, to be used in the wires, and all of these things were important uh, to make certain that we got a carillon really of the very best quality. It's uh, a challenging instrument to play, and if for some reason you have to give it up, uh, you're not allowed to go up and play anymore, then of course all of the time and energy and money you invested in learning to play the carillon uh, is no longer uh, of any use to you. So it's a, a difficult and challenging instrument to play. 